Okay. Good, good afternoon, respected audience and honorable person of the studio. Myself, Dr. Rubil Alam, HOD of Department of Chemistry, Rabindra Mahabidalai. We have assembled in a platform of webinar on Pishudoy Memorial Lecture organized by the Department of Chemistry in collaboration with IQAC. First, I heartily welcome to our respected principal, sir, Dr. Pashantha Bhattacharya, IQAC coordinator, Professor Tonmoy Bandhapadhyay, our organizing team, and Dr. Ponobi Porel, librarian, for technical support. I also cordially welcome our respected participants and my colleagues and my college authorities to provide such a beautiful platform to arrange this webinar. I would also like to request all the participants that they may ask relevant questions to our live chat box and those will be discussed after the end of the session. So before going to start the session, I would like to request our Honorable Principal, Sir Dr. Pashantha Bhattacharya to inaugurate the session. So over to you, Sir. Uh, thank you, Robiul. Uh, the inauguration, uh, does it also imply that uh, I have to come up with my kind of inaugural speech at the same time? I had the kind of notion that perhaps IQC coordinator sir, will, will precede me or am I, am I the first one? I'm just asking you. Yes, sir. Okay. So thank you, my dear HOD and the other esteemed colleagues who belong to the Department of Chemistry for arranging uh, such a fantastic uh, kind of a platform and use it for the purpose of a memorial lecture in the name of someone who might have been the result of the Bengali or Indian Renaissance that happened during the high age of colonialism. Uh, but not surprisingly, perhaps, PC Roy is one of those, you know, glorified sons of Bengal or gloried sons of Bengal who very rightly, I should rather say, uh, did not make or did not take the borders in terms of the knowledges or the ideas or the concepts that the West did provide us with as a result of that historical taking over of our territory by an overseas power here, the Britishers. So the resulting of a colony, I mean, turning India into a kind of a veritable colony by the Britishers and the establishment of Kolkata as the capital of that colonized state also uh, led to a kind of a rare efflorescence, cultural as well as uh, educational, academic, I'd rather say. Academic also is part of the whole cultural kind of front. And people like P.C. Roy, they basically had been a product of the Presidency College, which has a kind of a gloried tradition about itself. And he also taught there for a very, very long period of time. He did learn the good things from Western science, but reapplied it to our own present tradition, half forgotten, half obliterated, and restore it to its proper position of prestige. Uh, interestingly, the last 16 June this year happened to be the 76th death anniversary of PC Roy. And in a sense, we are doing some kind of justice to this uh, fantastic son of Bengal and that also of India by putting up at, le at least in his name uh, this kind of a memorial lecture of which uh, at least I can take pride in this fact that I had, a, I, had inst I had an instrumental role to play because I kept on prompting my dear colleagues to arrange something of this, uh, of this, of this uh, kind of you know, memorial lecture series to my HOD and the other colleagues and uh, I'm really happy and feeling my sentiment rather roused that they ultimately did it for us. Uh, it is not simply 
in the name of Rovindra Mohit Dalai that such a memorial lecture is to be uh, arranged or remembered. It is for the sake of, you know, not only recapitulation but for a serious introspection that we should go back to our roots, see for ourselves what these people really stood for, and what they really contribute. uh in terms of the development of knowledge especially in the frontier of science uh unlike the majority of the ill as we all could well understand that the bengalis were in direct proximity with the english ruling class and as a, and as a result of that they were the first beneficiaries to receive the good effects of english learning including english science and english literature now the thing is the west basically or the english nation basically opened a window a window to europe which basically was carrying out so many experiments and and were making striding developments especially in the field of science and now pc roy basically took help from that newly developing knowledge but as i have already told you his credit is like many of his other kind of uh, contemporaries like jesse bos they reapplied the kind of gathered knowledge they could master and 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 use it for developing a kind of uh, you know generation of self confidence uh, leading to acquiring of new knowledge and also you know rediscovering the things that were long forgotten and here i am remembering just the fact that uh, pc roy is the man who is instrumental in writing a tome named the history of hindu chemistry and and he himself had gone on record saying or suggesting that he took pride in the fact that he is a hindu and the the the, the repository of hindu chemistry basically fascinated him and he also had uh, collaboration with many overseas scholars including mosier barthelo and at that time perhaps he was the fellow of the edinburgh university ruby will would come up with all those details i think and uh, mosier barthelo seeing the kind of you know effort that he was putting into his work basically provided him with initially with three big volumes on medieval chemistry and that medieval chemistry basically pertains to the development that took place during the time of the medieval era especially in the middle east and also in europe it's crossover into europe and that basically inspired profullo chandro to to initiate such a kind of a work and then he ultimately produced his magnum opus for which he is still remembered today so the thing is not merely the rediscovery of the long forgotten tradition of hindu science and here by hindu he really meant the indian the ancient indian tradition he really did a service to the nationalist cause by you know making us proud of those things that we were capable of achieving even in those early days i mean the english people like any other colonizing nation were in the habit of letting us believe in the fact of our own supposed inferiority but it is people like profullo chandro who did give us the much necessary philip in believing that it is not actually true it is rather unfounded because as a glorious civilization that had its roots placed in the yore we had our own kind of you know achievements which is Uh, not a kind of a mean task uh, given the early time the charakas and the shustrutas of those early days uh, they were not in the strictest sense of the term could be called as chemists or an ex- experimenter in the field of chemistry they were mainly known for their own kind of experiments and works in the field of ayurveda but you see that was not a time of water tight compartmentalization of knowledge arenas so a man of ayurveda could have a kind of dabbling in the arena of science as well including that of chemistry and uh, it is this pioneering nature of his own intent and work which basically drew him, drew me uh, to 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 his own kind of achievement and to his own kind of work and he was not merely a fantastic teacher he is not merely a fantastic scientist 
he was not merely a kind of an inspirer he was not merely a nationalist who basically believed in the principles of gandhism he also happened to be just remember the early time when bengalis almost have forgotten that they also had a role to play and that that could be proven historically that they once they they were fantastic entrepreneurs by establishing by being the architect of uh, of an institute and which ultimately went on to become a limited company like bengal chemicals uh, uh, profumo chandra did show the world that one can start as a scientist as a pure academician but one can flourish also in the field of uh, trading and commerce by simply applying or channelizing that kind of talent or genius into something that basically earns money or capital for the uh, for the nation and and uh, true to his metal he could develop that kind of an insight that it is only economic independence which should be taken as an integral part of our political emancipation because unless we are economically independent the political emancipation becomes meaningless so he did that kind of rare job for us and and uh, you see in this present covid era when uh, the scientists and the researchers are still struggling to hit upon the right kind of panacea which should be a cure for this dreadful disease uh, profullo chandra and his bengal chemical is associated with the if not the origin of hydroxychloroquine because hydroxychloroquine was synthesized i think in the year of 1945 and it died in the year 1944 and hydroxychloroquine sulfate was a kind of a compound which was first synthesized by i think uh, sari and hammer uh, that could be corroborated by uh, the other esteemed colleagues of mine who are present today in this in the in the, in the platform but I, i'm just uh, trying to recollect from my own kind of you know nitty gritties and gatherings which i which, which i could uh, make because i did feel interested in profullo chandra uh, as a as a wonderful son of bengal uh, i mean uh, but but of course the name of bengal chemical is associated with the uh, near perfection quality of hydroxychloroquine which it sold for several years but since the demand ultimately fell in the market so uh, uh, that did not quite run on for for a for a long long time till during this time of covid 19 there was a further demand placed at its door for supply of hydroxychloroquine anyway and here is a man who is also known for uh, not only developing he is considered as a sort of a doyen in the in the field of uh, should i say is it uh, mercurous nitrate i mean nitrate chemistry is a kind of an arena or field for which he could take some legitimate and deserving credit and other than that he is also known for developing other compounds pure nitric acid i think is also one of his major contribution which he could extract in his own laboratory and uh, in his own famous bangla adage i think uh, the majority of my present audience and viewers comprise of bengali so i am quoting from his original bangla uh, ব্যবসা করো শিল্প ধরো চাকরি ছাড়ো সো হি ওয়াজ বেসিক্যালি এগেন্স্ট দিস কাইন্ড অফ ক্লারিক্যাল মাইন্ড সেট অফ দ্য বেঙ্গল ইজ বিকজ লার্জলি অ্যাজ আ রেজাল্ট অফ উই বিং আ স্লেভিশ নেশন ইট অলমোস্ট বিকেম আ নর্ম আ কাইন্ড অফ আ সোশ্যাল কালচারাল নর্ম ফর আস টু বি এবল টু স্পিক ইন ইংলিশ টু বি এবল টু রাইট ইন ইংলিশ অ্যান্ড অলসো টু এন্ড আপ being at least a shadow figure of an englishman the brown sahib even still today if someone calls me uh, bhattacharya sahib i i take some kind of a pride uh, that perhaps uh, i am someone who is akin to that original sahib uh, profullo chandra was vehemently against this kind of a stereotyping he always 
told his own own disciples his own students and his own followers and also his compatriots that there is nothing in mere imitation mere mimicking will let you flop into a kind of a mere slavish community it is only if you believe in the principle of self determination that one could achieve the true goal of life but that true goal of life can only come if you try to do something concrete something solid which has its present value meaning and a sort of a contemporaneity about itself a, a sort of a contemporaneity which also creates a sort of a meaningful legacy for us so it is for the purpose of recapitulating rethinking rediscovering and re feeling of that kind of a legacy of which we are the present recipients that I have at all told you and asked you my dear colleagues to arrange such a kind of a memorial lecture in the name of pc roy uh, you see mere birth and mere death the coming and going away of a glorious sun is not uh, something in itself unless we go for a serious post mortem a kind of a, that leads to a sort, sort of a serious self introspection on our part if this present memorial lecture that we are going to that 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 we have arranged for today is really going to inspire not only the students of my own college but all those who are just situated across who are just staying across and are glued to the screen uh, and 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 feeling some way or the other inspired uh, i think the real purpose of such a kind of an event will be served and the true ideal of someone called pc roy would also be served in the same manner in the same way uh, so i think i'm done all uh, this other people are waiting so hereby i end my lecture and uh, not not lecture really a sort of an inaugural uh, which has been placed uh, to to on my table and uh, i'm once again i suggest that i'm very very happy that ultimately my colleagues responded and responded so positively and the icc coordinator and the qvc cell which has been relentless in encouraging and arranging such programs which are really acquiring a, almost a sort of a different dimension from the time we really have started this at the mutual phase when the 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 lockdown had been imposed on the general activity of us so we could, uh, we could carry it on very meaningfully uh, and and uh, it is on this note and with a lot of expectation in the yes i am also further happy because pranobi despite all her troubles and the kind of confusions she is passing through right now uh, she still could manage and master up her courage and her energy to you know arrange for us such a kind of a program and uh, i'm especially happy for devosmita uh, because she has only joined our institution uh, for some days now uh, that she ultimately decided to rise to this particular occasion and uh, come up with her own presentation that also makes us pretty happy and uh, Shucheta, who has been by the, by now a veteran in the department, uh, Ruby as HOD, and my SACT teachers, uh, Tonno and Sina, uh, who must have a kind of a feeling of homecoming today, but in a new avatar. Uh, so, uh, good luck, and uh, you know, uh, wishing you the very best, and wishing for ourselves the very best. Uh, and and with this i end my present session and uh, tell the coordinator to take to take it to the next proceedings and uh, well expect good things to turn out thank you sir for your nice inaugural speech so now i would like to request our honorable iqsc coordinator professor tanmoy bandopadhyay to throw some light on today's topic so over to you sir thank you robiul thank you robiul
and our respected principal sir for giving me the opportunity to say something uh, in front of our learned teachers my beloved students and my college staff or colleagues i being the iqbc coordinator it's my duty to coordinate or link up everyone everything with everyone everything so today is also i am getting this opportunity of linking up the faculty members with the students during this lockdown period i also congratulate it subcommittee members department of chemistry staff all of them and specially dr pranobi porel for arranging such uh, series of lectures throughout this lockdown period nearly about 4 or 5 months now dr p c roy memorial uh, lecture this is Uh, this has been organized by the department of chemistry and uh, there are two speakers to speak today those both, both of them belong to the department of chemistry of our college um, actually today is the last day of the month of august 2020 and it is fortunate that our department of chemistry has arranged this program on dr pc roy whose uh, birthday is also in the month of august so fortunately on the last day we are uh, respecting him through our webinar this webinar is actually an attempt to acknowledge the world leading contribution made by one of the indian scientists dr prakulo chandra roy he is a chemist of international reputation who taught at first at presidency college calcutta and then he moved to the science college of the university of calcutta dr roy was himself an institution under whose guidance modern indian science grew he inspired generations of in students dr roy also encouraged entire uh, students about developing or what i should say entrepreneurship about entrepreneurship uh, which bengal was lacking at that time and still lacking over here also nowadays and he founded himself the bengal chemicals and pharmaceuticals it is india's first such company his time is recorded as the golden period for science in bengal and also india acharya prabhu chandra roy was an eminent bengali chemist he was an educationist and historian industrialist and also a philanthropist he established the first modern indian research school and he is regarded as the father of chemical science in india he also performed some social services in 1923 he organized bengal relief committee to collect 2.5 million rupees in cash and kind and distributed to the people of north bengal who suffered a flood he regularly donated towards welfare of sadharan brahmo samaj brahmo girls school and indian chemical society also in 1922 he donated money to the to establish nagarjuna prize to be awarded for the best work in chemistry in 1937 he donated to establish ashutosh mukherjee award to be awarded for the best work in zoology and botany also so we are privileged to respect him through this webinar series uh today's webinar 
and hope this will encourage or inspire the students those who especially belong to the science or chemistry department and i hope for the best and a successful program thank you over to you thank you sir for your nice and encouraging speech so now i would like to request our joint convener dr sucheta joy to start the technical session so over to you sucheta ji now our first speaker uh, uh, dr robiul alo of robindra mahavidyalaya will deliver a powerpoint presentation on uh, over on uh, acharya prabhula chandra roy uh, dr alab uh, did his post graduation from university of badwat and then he completed his phd post doctoral research work or uh, uh, from jadavpur university and uh, now he is a full time faculty of department of chemistry so over to dr alab dr sucheta joy for her nice introduction so i just am um, going to share my screen to just uh, wait for okay so can you see my slides second yes. ke dekha jaa chhe Pranavidhi, can you see my slides? Yes, you can see that. Okay. Yes, Slide sure. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. So as we know that 2nd August 2020 is the PC Roy's 159th birthday, so we will arrange this. webinar as a tribute to acharya popula chandra roy so actually we are late uh, because uh, it is 31st august so due to some uh, technical problem we cannot arrange it in proper time so myself dr rabul alam department of chemistry ravindra mahapatra chapanana hukli here i am going to deliver a short lecture on pc roy about his early life his education his achievement and contribution to science his research work and his foundation so uh, dr pishroy was born on 2nd august 1861 he is known as father of indian chemistry he is known as first modern indian chemical researcher so just uh, note the quoted term modern so which does it means modern indian chemical researcher so modern science is a science here human culture is developed solar system universe is developing here human being are developing actually crystallizing our modern science in the form of physics and mathematics at early stage but chemistry came much later because it is a molecular science we have to understand about molecule atoms uh, before understanding chemistry so you can understand why chemistry uh, came sign much later because the concept of atom or molecule was developed in 19th century but human being are extremely innovative they do not wait for science to develop and they empirically try and error and they find out such thing around them actually ancient man extensively used chemistry as a 
technology but there is no science actually they used chemistry as a technology even on, uh, even 1000 bc many technologies have been developed by the but the science uh, behind it could not be understood also uh, in india actually we are interesting so we are indian so we are interesting to know the india so also in india metallurgy and medicinal chemistry both are developed but as a technology so the science behind it could not be understood so modern science gives us the opportunity to understand science in terms of atom molecule structure mechanism so acharya uh, popular chandra roy gives us that favor of modern science and actually uh, he is also an indian scientist and very good teacher so now i'm coming to his early life and education so popular chandra roy, uh, roy was born in 2nd august 1861 in the village of Raruli Katipara, now in present in situation in the Bangladesh. His father, Harish Chandra Roy, was a landlord who loved in learning and he built up an extensive library at home. Actually, he is from a Jamindar family and with a very liberal views. His family moved to Kolkata when Popular Chandra was uh, nine years old and he attended the hair school. But unfortunately, he fell ill and returned to village because he has a problem with digestive issues and insomnia so during this recovery time he enjoyed to learn a lot more in his father's oil equipped library he read the books and he was interested in mainly in literature and history these are his favorite subject he would grow up to be a man with varied interest and he would say Diversified work have been my recreation, the chief solace of my life. He actually taught himself a half a dozen of languages. So in the initial time, he was not interested in chemistry. So he became a chemist almost by mistake. In his words, almost by mistake. Because when Kofila Chandra was doing an FA course, so during FA course, he was much more attracted uh, by listening the classes of uh, Alexander Pedler was a fascinating lecture and his mind thus ignited and he thought that uh, he should go for a chemistry. So he applied for a scholarship and he get a Gilchrist scholarship in 1882 and with this scholarship he attended Edinburgh University for BSc course at the age of 21. So, during his uh, BSc class, is uh, another lecture. There is a, another organic chemist who motivated him much more. He's also an Alexander, but this time this Alexander Graham Brown. He's the professor and head of the department, and also his practical classes were conducted by Dr. John Gibson, who was uh, very trained uh, in laboratory work. So his laboratory experiment attracted him much more and he is attracted towards chemistry much more and much more at that time. So remaining at Edinburgh, he also awarded a DSC in 1887 and win a Hope Prize for his thesis. So, uh, P.C. Roy returned to Calcutta in 1888 and became assistant professor in chemistry at the Presidency College in Calcutta in 1889. And during this tenure in Presidency College, he primarily explored the little known chemistry of inorganic nitrides because inorganic chemistry was not at that time when I'm talking about inorganic chemistry is much more disintegrated. This is not so in connection. So he tried to explore a new area and actually he is known as father of nitrides. And he also uh, moved on sulfur compounds and their complexes after sitting the University College of Science. So he established, he was so interested in chemistry that he established a research laboratory in his own 
and slowly gathered a group of dedicated students who researched with him. He published around more than 150 research paper during his lifetime and this research paper was published in a renowned journal of his time. So research also included the discovery of very stable compound of mercurous nitrite, which I'm talking about later in the latest slide, in 1896, by starting with nitrite and hyponitrite compound. His research also covered a wide range of problems related to food adultification. He also, uh, he is mainly an inorganic chemist, but he also researched in an organic compounds containing sulfur, homomorphism, and fluorination. Ray developed a new method for synthesis of ammonium nitrate. Bafula Chandra was interested in ancient texts, and after much research, he published the book, The History of Hindu Chemistry. And this book actually consists of a metallurgy and medicine in ancient India, because we know that in ancient India, metallurgy and medicine was so much developed, but as a technology. But the science is not then known. So he wrote this book, The History of Hindu Chemistry, and he presented uh, many Indian universities and international seminars and congresses. He was selected as Indian Science Congress president in the year 1920. His autobiography, Life and Experiences of a Bengali Chemist, published in two volumes in 1932 and 1935. So now, what I'm interested in with you to share the research work of by Acharya Pofila Chandra because during his teaching period, he used to introduce more and more practical work rather than theoretical. His, his all classes includes a neat experimental demonstration because as a chemist, we know that the practical work is very much, very much important for us to understand the theoretical chapter. So he brings, he, he always try to involve the student in experimental demonstration. So uh, Popular Chandra writes when he come contact with Mr. Alexander Pittler in FA course, Popular Chandra writes, I began almost unconsciously, unconsciously to be attracted to the new branch of science because initially he was not interested in chemistry, but uh, by motivating, by, by listening the lecture, by doing the practical work, he became unconsciously attracted to the new branch of science. So he chose inorganic chemistry because at that time, when I'm talking about science was just developing, modern science was just developing and max, uh, maximum science scientific work have been done by European countries. So in India, he's the first Indian modern researcher who gives us the flavor of modern research. So at this time, organic chemistry was marching ahead, physical chemistry, was just being born, but inorganic chemistry rather disorganized. So he chose the field in organic chemistry. So the, I just want to show you the first research work during his DSC course uh, by Acharya Pofila Chandra Rai, because uh, in 1855, four scientists has published a paper with double sulfate and he gives the formula of the double sulfate as mm2so4 dot mbso4 dot 6 h 2 there is a third bracket okay the third bracket is coordination zone dot mm2so4 dot mb prime so4 dot 6 h 2 so what is this so mm here mm is the monovalent ammonium or potassium ion MB is the bivalent copper, iron, cobalt, zinc ion, and MB prime is copper or magnesium or zinc or manganese, cobalt, cadmium, nickel. So this formulation was given by the whole. Then Aston and Pickering, the two scientists, question about the existence of this bold double sulfur salt and the attempt to prepare several reports to prepare this type of salt but they failed to yield a definite compound. So Perfilo Chandrai 
takes this as a challenge and he prepared this 12 compound you can see in the slide one two three for this 12 compound by varying the composition and the changing the condition he was able to prepare this 12 salt and he introduced a new formula you can see the formula somewhat changed that in his formula this he include x and y you can see that x and y x is four y may be five x may be two y may be three so x and y are the integer value and he isolated this 12 salt from the mixture of uh, salt and which is a very challenging task which is very challenging task at that time so uh, with the uh, development uh, of science now we have crystallography we have nmr we have lots of apparatus so now in modern days uh, we know that this uh, double double sulfate formula was uh, not correct because we uh, know that double sulfate if we dissolve double sulfate it decomposes into its composite ions because uh, if you dissolve more salt it uh, dissolves in water and produce NH4 plus Fe2 plus SO4 2 minus ion but in its formulation there is a third bucket that is under coordination zone you know that the metal ion or sulfate cannot be used so this type of structure is not correct in recent days but in that time when talking about there is no instrument to to predict this type of structure the main challenge for inorganic chemist is to prepare compounds and to characterize it but at that time characterization is very very difficult so with with his time this is a great work now around 1895, Popper began his work with nitrate chemistry. An unexpected discovery of mercurous nitrite, which Popper Chandra was called a new chapter in his life. It opened a new chapter in his life. He actually known as the father of nitrite. Actually, this is an accidental discovery because actually Popper Chandra Roy was trying to prepare mercurous nitrate by using mercury and dilute nitric acid. So he had it in condition, but he noticed that the yellow crystalline solid is precipitated. At the time, he does not know what is the actual formula, but when crystallography come, and we have done the crystallographic image of uh, this mercurous nitrite, and you can see that this is the dimer. Okay, this is actually a dime. So, okay, okay, this is actually a dimer. So you can see there is a two mercury. The marker mercury distance is two point five for angstrom, and uh, this is the nitrite. This is O O, and this is N, and this is another nitrate. So the formula is Hg two NO two whole two. And this is unsymmetrical chelation occur because mercury is attached with this oxygen and this mercury is attached to this oxygen, but you can find the distance. This is 2.20 angstrom and this distance HGO is 2.61. So this is unsymmetrical chelation by nitrates ion with mercury. And this is centrosymmetric in nature. And this work is very much appreciated this work is pu first published in the Journal of Asiatic Society of Bengal, which was immediately noticed by the nature. And, uh, and this is the first page of Rice paper on nitrites of mercury, uh, in which uh, he announced his discovery in the Journal of Chemical Society of London. So uh, not only he was working with mercurous nitrate, but he also gives us a lot of experimental results because he calculated the vapor density of ammonium nitrite which was very difficult at the time because we know that ammonium nitrite decomposes at slight heating into nitrogen and water but perfectly on the right on careful heating it to 70 degrees centigrade in moderate vacuum a part of ammonium uh, the part of ammonium nitrite which is solid 
sublimes and unchanged it does not decompose and it sublimes into a vapor stage and at this stage you calculate or determine the vapor density of ammonium nitrite and the observed density was found to be agree very well that of the calculated of ammonium nitrate which demonstrated that the salt remains undissociated so he is able to do it and this work is very much appreciated by nature magazine he also explored the chemistry of many alkyl ammonium nitrites such as rn3no2 r2n2no2 r3nh2 so this r group is a alkyl group it may be methyl ethyl propyl isopropyl etc etc so the thermal stability and reaction of all this compound was examined so popular chandra also looked at uh, some properties of uh, parent acid that is nitrous acid he calculated its dissociation constant its rate of decomposition the dissociation constant was determined from the electrical conductivity because at that time electrical conductivity was developed in physical chemistry so he took this these are the very a minimum experiment at the time but with the help of this minimum facility he the data he can cal calculated as a dissociation constant data 6 into 10 to minus 4 which corresponds to a pk 3.22 and this value was still remain unchanged this day so you can imagine how how the, how accurately he have done this so uh, he in uh, 19 104 he was succeed in isolating pure mercuric nitrite as light yellow needles by reaction with mercuric chloride with silver nitrate in aqueous media and these are the uh, some compounds synthesized by Prophilo Chandra so the first compound is HGN2 whole for 2 minus this is the eight coordinated compound you can see that the central metal is a mercury and there is a 4 no 2 group which binds with the mercury center to form a unsymmetrical chelation through because mercury oxygen and mercury oxygen distance are not same it ranges from 2.34 angstrom to 2.58 angstrom and this has a distorted square antiprismic geometry and this structure was uh, established after discovery of x-ray crystallography and this is the second compound you can find uh, this is uh, actually a bipyridine but in pcro's work this is not a bipyridine this is ethylene diamine which have same binding mode so you can replace it by ethylene diamine and you get the geometry or give the structure of that compound prepared by actually pc ray and this compound you can see that uh, mercury is a tetrahedral geometry and this is the compound three this a g two n x square it is prepared by a reaction with a g n n o two with uh, acid h x that x may be c l that is the acid may be h c l h p r or nitric acid which reacts with a g two n n o two so this type of structure three can be achieved you can see in the structure that the small sphere is nitrogen and the big sphere is mercury so each nitrogen is connected with four mercury. So this is a tetrahedral, and this tetrahedral linked one another to form a the giant structure. And the last structure, uh, when PC Roy reacts simple aliphatic thiol, RSH, he prepared, he is able to prepare RSH HGNO2. So this is the structure of this RS marker r s h h g n o 2 so you can see in the picture h g s and r group is the here the methyl group and n o 2 there is no n o 2 group in this structure because that this is a similar structure so you can find that this is the acetate group an acetate group you can put n o 2 so this become a nitrite so this type of structure are uh, this type of compounds are prepared by such a pc ray at his time and the foundation by PCD, PCD, that in 1892 with a small capital of 700 Indian rupees he established the Bengal chemical works which flourish under his management and the company initially produced herbal products and medicines in 1901 the enterprise became a limited company 
and you know the, the name of the company, Bengal Chemical and Pharmaceuticals Works Limited, which is the Indian first pharmaceutical company. And in the previous, in the innovation speech, said also, I told that hydroxychloroquine was prepared in this company. And this is, uh, this company was expanded and become the leading chemical and medicine producer. He also established Calcutta Soap Works, other factories, Bengal Pottery Works, a new Indian school of chemistry. So Prophilak and the Rai actually was a very passionate and devoted social worker. And he participated eagerly and actively in helping famine and food stuff people in Bengal during the early 1920s. He promoted the Khadi material and also established many other industries such as Bengal Enamel Works, National Tannery Works, and Calcutta Pottery Works. He was, he was a true nationalist and he was totally against the caste system. He persistently carried on his work on social reform mission till he passed away. So remaining the bachelor throughout his life, Popular Chandra returned, becoming a professor emeritus in 1936 at the age 75. And he died on 16 June 1944 at the age of 82. So now I would like to acknowledge Professor Onimus Chakravarti from his paper. I can manage this type of information. So thank you. That's for my end. Thank you once again. Thank you, Robiel, for such a nice PowerPoint presentation. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, now, Robiel, shall we start that question answer session now or uh, after the talk of second speaker? Now you have to introduce the second speaker. OK, so uh, uh, we will uh, start our question answer session after the talk of uh, second speaker. So now I am going to introduce our second speaker, uh, Dr. Devasmita Shardar, uh, our second speaker. Um, so, uh, Dr. Shardar has completed his uh, post-graduation and PhD uh, from University of Calcutta, and he has uh, done his, uh, she has done his uh, postdoctoral research work uh, from Jacob University, Germany, and uh, now, uh, now she will deliver a lecture on nanomaterials, which is a very current topic. Uh, for nowadays research. So over to Devashmita. Thank you, Shishita uh, for your introduction. So now I'll share my screen. Just a minute. In lecture, I'll give some basically introduction of nano, and then I'll continue my presentation. But first, uh, I'll say some word about uh, PCR. So in 19, uh, 1916,
উপলব্ধি কিছু দেখা যাচ্ছে না Is there any technical problem, Pranavi? Finish out of studio. Okay, okay. আমার নেটটা চলে গিয়েছিল আমি বুঝতে পারি ওকে নাও ক্যান স্টার্ট আমি স্টার্ট করব Uh-huh. Okay. okay, so thank you, Sujata Di, for introducing me. So I hope you can see my screen. So now, before starting my presentation, I will give you some uh, lecture about PCDOT. So in 1996, uh, he joined the chemistry department of uh, Calcutta University, Rajavar Science College, as his first Pali professor of chemistry. Taruknath Palit. And there is a building in Rajabhajal Science College named Palit Building where I have studied in my master degree. Papers uh, from this uh, Calcutta University and uh, he has worked in the Journal of the Indian Chemical Society uh, from here. And the in Again, this is out of studio. This is due to some network issue. Yes. Hello? 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 আমি কি প্রথম থেকে স্টার্ট করব হ্যালো আমি কি আবার প্রথম থেকে স্টার্ট করব হ্যাঁ 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 সেটা হলে ভালো হয় আর কি হুম আরে নেটটা কেন বারবার চলে যাচ্ছে বুঝতে পারছি না ঠিকই থাকে তো ঠিক আছে আশা করি আর যাবে না তাহলে আমি স্টার্ট করি হ্যাঁ আচ্ছা uh thank you uh, uh Di, for introducing me so uh, first i'll um, give you some lecture about pc roy and the history of chemistry and pc roy rubilla already gave you the uh, introduction but still so in 1960 uh, pc roy joined the chemistry department of calcutta university rajavaja science college uh, as his first palit professor of chemistry and uh, 
a chair named after Taruknath Palit. There is a building in Rajabal Science College uh, named Palit Building where I have studied my master degree in chemistry. So here he has started working on compounds like iridium, platinum, mercaptile, sulfides. And he published lots of paper from this Rajabal Science College and um, and from journal of the Indian Chemical Society. And this uh, Indian Chemical Society is situated here. So he made a gift uh, of his entire salary to the Calcutta University from that date onward to be spent for the furtherance of chemical research and the development of Department of Chemistry in Rajavaja Science College, the University of College of Science, now the official name of Rajavaja Science College. So his working laboratory now is opened as a museum and some of his belongings are still displayed uh, in this museum. So I have worked in my PhD research just beside his lab in Rajavala Science College. So it was very prestigious for me uh, to be there. So now I'll continue um, with my presentation. And uh, so just I want to share my screen. Okay, so uh, let's get started. My topic of today's talk is synthesis, structural elucidation, and potential application of nanoparticles and hybrids. So first, uh, in this talk, I will give you a short introduction or idea about nanoparticle, uh, nanoscience, nanotechnology. And then I will show you what I have done in my PhD research some of my work i'll show you so now you first you have to know that what is uh, nano particle so basically nano means very small and in greek word nano is um, nanos or in latin word nano is nanos which means it is very small and which means dwarf you know what is dwarf it is uh, that one it's very small man so in the length scale, it is one billionth of meter, that is 10 to the power minus nine meter equal to one nanometer. So uh, a nanometer is a microscopic particle with at least one dimension in nanoscale or which have at least one dimension is less than 100 nanometer. So uh, nanomaterials are basically larger than a single atom like hydrogen atom or any single atom, but smaller than uh, the smallest thing like bacteria cells. So these are nanomaterials. And uh, why mm, and what is nanoscience? Basically, nanoscience and nanotechnology is the art of science of manipulating matter at the nanoscale. So mm, nanoparticles, are of great scientific interest as they are effective bridge between bulk materials and atomic or molecular structure. So nanomaterials have basically lots of potential application in not only in chemistry, but also in physics, biology, medicine, material science, electronics, biomaterials, catalysis. So it can be called as interdisciplinary topic. So first, before starting anything, I will give you a short history of nanoscience from where it came. So in 1959, uh, American physicist Richard P. Feynman on his legendary lecture at Caltech USA, uh, um, he gave a legendary lecture. The lecture's name was, there is plenty of room at the bottom. So here he raised lots of questions like why cannot we write the entire 24 volumes of the encyclopedia britannica on the head of a fin so after hearing that weird question uh, everyone who presented there 
they laughed at loud and they told that surely you are joking mr feynman so uh, but he he was the first who introduced the word nano basically the word nano was that time just miniaturizing i mean miniaturizing like that like the from the big one to gradually from the small one this is called the miniaturizing and he introduced that concept okay so now we have to understand that what is nano i mean the size so you can you can just you can look the slide here the 1 mm equal to 10 to the power minus 3 meter okay and 1 micrometer equal to 10 to the power minus 3 Millimeter. So, if we put uh, one micrometer equal to ten to the power minus six meter, I mean, if we put one millimeter here, then we can get one micrometer equal to ten to the power minus six meter. And what is nanometer range? That is one nanometer equal to ten to the power minus three micrometer. Okay. And if we put one micrometer here. That is one nanometer equal to ten to the power minus nine meter. So now we have a question that why nanoparticles? Why you are you curious about um, the nanoparticle? So because nanoparticles are very much reactive, and that's why um, nanoparticles is so much reactive. and in nano scale surface to volume ratio is maximum and um, you can see that picture that from here from a to b to c to d that the volume of the four block is same the total volume is same but from a to b to c to d we are just um, dividing this block into uh, different pieces so here more surface area is exposed so Uh, so we can see that after cutting this into small pieces more and more surface molecule is highly exposed and due to difference in surface property from their bulk nanoparticles is highly reactive so that's why they have lots of potential applications okay so understanding the size nano uh, we have to um, go through this um, picture so here is a picture by which we can visualize relationship between bulk material and nano materials so hello okay we can listen am i audible yes yes you are audible okay you can so, go so okay uh, so uh, i should they was meet up le माइल्स If we divide it fifty one times million times, I mean five one zero lakh times, then we can get the basketball size that is nine point eight inches. Okay, and then here the nanoparticle comes where it is fifty one million times smaller. So um, that uh, I mean that 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 much small is nanoparticle. 
So here is some real time nanoparticle in our environment. That is, uh, you can see the picture and you can understand the how much small is nano. That human hair strand is one millimeter. Uh, RBC is 10 micromillimeter. Uh, virus is one micromillimeter. And protein is 100 nanometer. And DNA is one nanometer. And hydrogen atom is one Armstrong. So here, 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 that is the nanometer range where DNA and protein comes. So an ant size is five millimeter and head of a pin is one to two millimeter. So nano is much more smaller than that. Okay, so then uh, I'll sh shortly discuss about the approaches towards synthesis of nanotechnology. So there are two approach, top down approach and bottom up approach. So uh, what is top down approach? This is the cut. This is the cutting of bulk material into very small one. And the bottom up approach is assemble system together to give the rise to more complex system. Basically, it is a um, assembly of self uh, um, molecule. So now I'll discuss about the um, classification of nanomaterials. And depending on chemical nature, uh, nanomaterials can be divided into uh, five um, parts, metal, uh, semiconductor, organic nanoparticles, carbon-based nanoparticles, and hybrid nanocomposite. And depending on their dimensions, um, it can be divided into four dimensions, like um, quantum dot, nano rod nano one dimension is nano rod nano tube nano wire nano fiber mm, two dimension is nano sheet thin layers quantum oil and three dimension is a bulk material basically in uh, zero dimension the all the three dimension is confined whereas in uh, one dimension one dimension uh, is free and other two dimension is confined and in two dimension uh, one dimension is confined and other two dimension is free to move. And in three dimension, all the um, three dimension are free. That is bulk material. So um, that is the picture of uh, zero dimension, one dimension, two dimension and three dimension. So um, this is these are the overview of the classification of nanomaterials. Now, uh, I'll um, show you some evolution parameter of nanoparticles. That is uh, how we can evaluate the nanoparticles because it can't be seen in naked eye. So how um, we can, I mean, give you the result that I don't know anything about nanoparticles, okay? After seeing such nanoparticles. So we need this evolution parameter to describe the nanoparticles. So first, we have to know the percentage of yield of nanoparticles, that how much uh, nanoparticles we can get after uh, starting the reaction from the uh, precursor. So next one is particle size and shape. To uh, see the particle size and shape, uh, four types of microscopic um, determination can be measured. The first one is uh, transmission electron microscope, Second one is scanning electron microscope and third one is atomic force microscope and fourth one is scanning tunneling microscope. So then next one is zeta potential. Zeta potential is basically the surface potential of nanoparticle uh, and optical uh, then the optical properties UV visible spectroscopy can measure the optical properties. Uh, fluorescence properties um, can be measured by fluorescence spectroscopy. Surface properties can be measured by XPS. XPS means X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy. And um, whether the crystal, whether the nanoparticles is crystal or amorphous or powder, it can be um, easily known by uh, XRT, powder XRT. And the surface characterization is commonly measured by FTIR spectra. So FTIR spectra can depict the bonding between the nanoparticles and the organic ligands. And last one, that is magnetic measurement. Basically, the, uh, the 
every immunon particles are not magnetic uh, so they have uh, the metal nanoparticles mainly or some non metal nanoparticles have uh, very few nanoparticles have this magnetic properties and we can measure these magnetic properties by this machine superconducting quantum interference device vibrating sample magnetometer that is called fluid vision okay so now um, i'll come to this slide this is very important you have to know that application of nanoparticles in various field so um, you can see that here lots of picture over there but um, basically nanoparticles applications are everywhere in our daily life like in medicine in electronics in cosmetics um, in uh, um, catalysis in magnetism so everywhere um, it is i mean it is present so uh, i'll show some um, application that how can nano science and nanotechnology improve our lives that in nano medicine like uh, drug delivery cancer treatment biological sensors immunity for aids flu influenza virus for for this kind of um, uh, uh, flu virus we can treat them with nanoparticles in healthcare so now it is sunscreen uh, cosmetics uh, makeup the, these different types of uh, um, healthcare product are loaded with nanoparticles also toothpaste the toothpaste has zinc oxide and uh, in technology beta data storage um, processing solar cells uh, quantum electronics optical electronics nano devices semiconductor field effect transistor uh, mram these type of things can be enhanced by nanoparticles so now uh, i'll discuss a thing that uh, what is mram mram is magnetic random accessory uh, memory so mram is enabled by nanometer scale magnetic tunnel junctions and can quickly and effectively save data during a system shutdown i mean uh, sudden system shutdown or enable resume play features and now Hmm, uh, the we can all all we can see the led tv led tv has the nano cell technology which gives the vibrant color of the led tv now the transistor in 2014 intel created a 14 nanometer transistor and then in 2015 ibm uh, created a 7 nanometer transistor so that's in that way uh, nanoparticles <laughs> enters in our life uh, now uh, um, these materials so we can use that as nano paints and that is water and dart repellent nano coating stain resistant cloths in uh, we can use nanoparticles in environment to clean energy uh, um, and clean air and groundwater in food processing they can be used like flavor enhancer marking fruits and vegetables anti caking agent some uh, sulfoxide nanoparticles can be used as anti caking agent so here some pictures of nanoparticles silver nanoparticles basically used as antimicrobial agent uh, uh, ferric oxide nanoparticles as food coloring the vibrant red color uh, in food um, comes from uh, ferric oxide nanoparticle and titanium nanoparticle basically this is titania it is called titania titanium oxide nanoparticles it is it has immense um, use as photocatalyst because it um, breaks the pollutant in carbon dioxide and water i will show you later so mercedes benz has developed a scratch resistant clear coat shiny coating with these nanoparticles and here there are some also application like it, I, I told you earlier that nano paint, uh, nano paint we can use in building to shine or not only shine that water and dark dark repeat and these are these are heat insulating nano paint and uh, basically TiO2 decomposes organic pollutant to clean the environment. Okay and here the ray this picture is um, uh, from the european church european church has this type of um, uh, glass in everywhere you can see 
so these stained glass um, uh, this the, the color the red color or the the white color this type of color came from silver and gold nanoparticles and i mean before christ and before long time ago they used these nanoparticles they didn't know that that time that it, this was nanoparticle but that time they used silver and gold nanoparticles to color the glass now uh, approaching towards nano here this slide depicts that the size matters for nano when this is basically you can see the um, picture here that is uh, when gold is in armstrong size uh, then uh, it is basically colorless when it is in um, nano range when it is uh, below than one nanometer then it is yellow color but when it is uh, in uh, three to 30 nanometer range then it gives a beautiful red color and I, I i also have made these red colored nanoparticles um, in um, lab so it is very use very easy to uh, um, synthesize this type of gold nanoparticles and when um, you are increasing the size of gold particles 30 to 500 nanometer gradually the color is going from red to violet to blue and bulk gold frame is um, looking like the gold i mean golden color so now i will come to my research work where some real you, where you can see some real uh, um, nanoparticle where i have synthesized in my lab so first one is nickel uh, silver nickel gold nanoparticles in aqueous phase basically in aqueous phase i have synthesized it so, uh, so this um, slide depicts the schematic representation of different steps involved in the synthesis of nickel silver and nickel gold nanoparticles here you can see that for nickel silver the uh, left one nickel uh, silver nanoparticles um, uh, can be formed via transmutation reaction and it is one step reaction and the right one the nickel gold nanoparticle can be synthesized by two step reaction with a um, surface modification with tryptophan so um, this is the nickel silver nanoparticles uh, characterizations this is the uv visible spectroscopy and uh, this is xps spectroscopy from xps i told you earlier that xps spectroscopy depicts the surface Mm, mm, characterization the surface property in surface property basically these type of nanoparticles are crucial nanoparticles so in surface so there are silver so silver the presence of silver can be um, proved by these characterizations so this type of characterizations are very much useful to characterize of nanoparticles now this is nickel silver nanoparticles the real picture this is a real picture of nickel silver nanoparticles mm, so mm, it can be seen by team transmission electron microscopy this red one is nickel and the green one is silver and this is the composite picture the f f is a composite picture where the uh, red one and uh, green one mm, have been merged okay and this one is the black one the c c picture is one nanoparticle and you can see that uh, there is, is a shell outside the black nickel nanoparticle so so by this picture we can really see that what is happening in the solution because in naked eye we can't see anything okay so now um, i'll show you some nickel gold nanoparticles here um, i have synthesized this this green one is nickel this in the c picture c the green one is nickel nanoparticles d is uh, only gold nanoparticles i i told you that it is red um, but it, it is basically color um, just um, reflected from the machine but really the gold nanoparticle is uh, crimson red and the green red and the e e picture is an overlay of nickel and gold nickel gold nanoparticles okay and you can see that in e picture that there is a red lining over the green nickel nanoparticles 
सो ही आर सम कैरेक्टराइजेशन लाइक यूवी विजिबल स्पेक्ट्रोस्कोपी फ्लोरोसेंट स्पेक्ट्रोस्कोपी इफ टी आर स्पेक्ट्रोस्कोपी वेयर फ्रॉम वेयर वी कैन श्योर वी कैन बी श्योर दैट ओके दे आर रियल निकेल गोल्ड नैनो पार्टिकल्स ओके सो द नेक्स्ट वन इज मैग्नेटिक मेजरमेंट दिस इज बेसिकली एप्लीकेशन is the application of uh, these nickel gold nanoparticles they basically they are magnetic so uh, for this magnetism we can use them in um, drug delivery or in medicine nano medicine and uh, this is the application of nickel gold nanoparticle uh, where um, this nickel gold nanoparticle uh, we have injected in normal human cell I and mean, in normal uh, blood so um, after um, doing the um, uh, process this is named as in vitro cytosepsis assay on uh, pbmcs basically it was a collaboration work with uh, some physiological uh, department of um, calcutta university so um, we have uh, worked with real um, human um, blood cell so here um, the result is that nickel nanoparticles are very much toxic to human cell but what i have done what i have synthesized the nickel gold nanoparticles they are not toxic and so they are biocompatible to normal human cell so we can use them as a medicine so now i i'll show you some cobalt core the um, eu cell i mean uh, cobalt gold coat shell nano hybrid here is the uh, schematic presentation this one is cobalt this one is cobalt 52 modification i i showed you that um, for cobalt gold or any um, nickel gold or cobalt gold there is a need of um, uh, surface modification which can be fulfilled by tryptophan so first we have to synthesize cobalt nanoparticles then cobalt tryptophan nanoparticles and then cobalt gold nanoparticles so here are some characterization to prove that okay this is cobalt gold core shell composite uh, you can see the c picture is also like looks like uh, nickel gold nanoparticles this is red uh, the cobalt uh, portion and the green is gold portion mm. it is not a real um, color it is just the color from the machine mm, which reflects the mm, metal portion okay and the first one uv study fpsid is all proof the all are the proof of the cobalt core initial composite formation okay then i'll show you uh, again nickel gold nanoparticle but in organic solution first one i have synthesized in uh, aqueous phase but this one is in organic phase so in organic phase the three picture this uh, abc three pictures are for tail this is at the transmission electron microscopic picture and the this uh, the lower three are d e f are same pictures this is same means the secondary electron microscopic pictures so um, the difference in the picture is that from a to b to c we are uh, increasing the concentration of um, gold ion gold precursor so after giving more and more gold precursor the whole you can see the whole whole portion is increasing and it it is also magnetic mm, magnetic nanoparticles so we can use also in our body or human cell but yeah we have to first go through some mm, uh, physiological work because we have to check that it is toxic or not so then uh, i'll show you some uh, nano catalysis and application of nano materials so basically now it is a nano catalysis is very much useful and it has a lots of application nano of nano catalysis like uh, minimal uh, chemical waste or um, environment cleaning energy efficiency enhanced economy so for this we are very much interested in nano catalysis okay so for this purpose i have synthesized a zinc oxide nano composite which is a semiconductor noble metal composite and i will show you some photocatalysis so here i have basically here i have synthesized zinc oxide silver nano composite but um, i um, didn't synthesize synthesize the zinc oxide basically zinc of pure zinc oxide the yellow one this is commercial so um, i didn't synthesize this this i purchased from market and with some modification with oleic acid and then with silver nitrate 
I have synthesized this zinc oxide silver nanocomposite with different composition of silver, like 1%, 5%, 10%, 15%, 15 and 35%. These are the composition of silver. I mean the increasing amount of silver. And then we have checked the photocatalysis effect. So these are the 10 images, the transmission electron microscopic images, the real images. The A is a very, in A, very much low, low amount of, very low amount of uh, silver nanoparticles. You can see that, that, that the black spot is for silver nanoparticles. And in B, uh, increasing um, amount of um, silver, we have added, a, um, I mean, 10 percent silver precursor here. So there are more increasing amount of silver nanoparticles. You can see that here, 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 the black, black spot of silver nanoparticles. And in C, this is a 35 percent. This is the optimum. Basically, in 35 percent um, uh, uh, composite, we, we have used 35 percent of um, silver nanoparticles as a precursor and lots of you can see that very small small uh, black spot over here the lots of uh, silver nanoparticles uh, have been seated on the zinc oxide matrix but after that after increasing the percentage from 35 percent we can see that no longer the uh, silver nanoparticles can be seated in the genome matrix they are scattering outside the matrix in the solution so 35 percent is the optimum we can say that 35 percent is the optimum nanoparticles which can be uh, seated on the jeteno matrix okay then after synthesizing this nanocomposite we have um, uh, examined a photocatalysis what is this basically this photocatalysis means this uh, zinc oxide silver is a uh, semiconductor i have told you earlier so this semiconductor have has generally two bands valence band and conduction band in valence band uh, there are electrons and in conduction band there are holes but after exciting with sunlight or any other light the electron from valence band jumps into conduction band okay and mm, it stays over there for few times and these times is called lifetime and this lifetime is characteristics of the semiconductor so after the lifetime is over they can jump into valence band and uh, th this can be called as recombination and uh, the one thing i want to tell you that this uh, hole when this electron uh, jumps into conduction band, there is a hole is created and conduction band gets um, one electron. So that hole um, has a capability to uh, um, give this uh, hydroxyl radical ion. Okay. And this electron can give the superoxide radical ion. This radical ion can uh, form, uh, basically this radical ion can uh, uh, break the pollutant, the organic pollutant in air into carbon dioxide and H2. But here in lab, um, as we can't use the um, DART, so here methylene blue molecules can be used as model pollutant. Okay. So here, so the recombination, if the recombination happens, then the electron can jump uh, from conduction band to valence band. Then if the recombination happens, then these uh, photocatalysis cannot be done. But so that's why uh, we, we, we will not get the photocatalytic effect. So that's why we inserted silver nanoparticles just below the conduction band of the zinc oxide so that it can trap the electron so that the recombination cannot be happened. And this, if this electron stays here, then it can produce the superoxide ion and this hole can produce the hydroxyl ion and it can act as a photocatalyst. And we can use that in our, to clean our environment. So uh, earlier I have showed you that how nano paint um, have been used in the um, Mercedes range or in building in Dubai in main, many buildings are coated with nano paint because they they are self clean and they self clean their own surface as like that. Okay, so now uh, that's it for today's lecture. I acknowledge um, these important people. So um, thank you, um, principal sir. Uh,
thank you coordinator sir thank you robiulda for giving me such uh, opportunity to give today's lecture thank you shushita di thank you my co teachers uh, thank you all uh, thank you pranavidi thank you any question thank you devutika for your such a nice presentation uh, now the session is open for question answer okay so uh, shall we start the question answer session devutika uh -huh. yes yes okay uh, 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 so devutika one one minute uh um, i have a question to our first speaker uh robiu can you hear me okay let's start with uh, devasmita your question uh so okay hi yeah robiu is here so robiu uh, there is a question uh, that uh, acharya propulla chandra rai Well, uh, has had worked with mercury, okay? Uh, but we all know mercury is very much poisonous. As you also, you are also working with uh, mark, uh, chemical sensor, metal ion sensor. Can you put uh, some light on mercury sensor? Uh, for the actual question, why why he is used uh, use mercury? Yes, we know something about mercury sensor. मैं फसल मध्य पोकाम चेस्टा कर मार्का रिलेटेड किट कम्पाउंड इंटरेस्टेड छे मार्केट कर इनफरमेशन रियक्शन basically it is a exchange reaction where two metal uh, can exchange their uh, re re reduction site okay so one metal like if we start from nickel and silver uh, nickel can be like this reaction uh, to form the nickel silver nanoparticle mm, we can start from nickel and uh, silver precursor uh, nickel precursor is nickel nitrate and silver precursor is silver nitrate so nickel and silver can uh, um, can be reacted and to give and give can give nickel silver nanoparticle and here they can exchange their oxidation oxidation state okay nickel uh, can be um, reduced and um, basically this reaction will be op opposite reaction so basically nickel 2 uh, plus can be reduced to nickel 0 And um, Ag zero can be uh, oxidized to Ag plus. So this is also um, uh, transmutation reaction. But I have used here the opposite reaction where nickel two plus is can be used in nickel zero and Ag plus basically Ag zero 
can be oxidized to AgS. So transmitter reaction, transmitterization reaction is a uh, exchange reaction between the uh, oxidation potential. Okay, there is uh, another question uh, from Muhammad Rakibuddin that how did you confirm that nickel is in the core site and silver is in the outer cell site? So can you okay. light on this? Yes, so I, I uh, have shown some uh, mm. Uh, some um, tame pictures basically this is a tame picture so here uh, from here I, I for the time i cannot show i mean i couldn't give the uh, more slide but here we have um, we have i mean examined lots of tame pictures where from these pictures uh, from this here we can um, do a chemical mapping from this chemical mapping we exactly we we, we, we know that exactly where the metal where is the position of the metal we can know okay so here this is like uh, here this is nickel like here you, you can see that picture this is nickel and this is silver so this is silver we can be sure from the chemical mapping from this portion and this portion and also this picture also can uh, mm, uh, depict that this is nickel because you you after seeing this this red green you uh, can't imagine this, this is nickel or this is gold but in chemical mapping or in machine it show that okay this is nickel this is gold and here nickel gold is composite that's okay, now from your talk is how much nickel core percentage in percentage is present in composite? In the composite. How much? So yes, basically, much? basically, it is a shell. Basically, nickel and uh, this is nickel uh, silver. It is nickel gold. It is a very thin shell. So you can um, just see that the tame the image of nickel so this is nickel this is 38 nanometer and the cell portion is thickness of uh, silver cells is 2 nanometer so you can uh, calculate the ratio 38 is to 2 so that is the ratio okay another question mm -hmm. uh, from dr swadesh goes which process is most more favorable for synthesis of nanoparticle top down or bottom up approach so uh, basically it is depending um, upon the um, feature you, you want to you want to get basically i didn't use that uh, it is basically available <laughs> in the literature i didn't use that so which is more convenient i don't know uh, i used that type of uh, process that is uh, transmutation or the surface modification but i didn't use the top down or uh, uh, bottom up basically they are a machinery approach and they can be uh, this approach can be used in um, industry okay. 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 i have a uh, there was vita uh, rather you can say this is a silly question can nanoparticle, especially gold, you have worked with gold and nickel nanoparticle, can these nanoparticles kill virus? Because nowadays we are very much interested on it in this topic. Sorry, I, I can't yeah. hear. Is there any property of nanoparticles, such nanoparticles, that they can kill virus? Yeah, obviously they have, they have lots of properties, but uh, I don't know uh, that how uh, they can kill the coronavirus because this is a very lengthy and long process to be examined, but obviously it can kill the virus. Okay, uh, Devasvita, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you once again, Rubiul, your uh, for your uh, talk also. Now I want uh, to conclude the session uh, that we have uh, listened a very two very nice, nice and very useful talk.
now Rubil, you should give the vote of thanks okay so i would like to thank uh, all the audience for joining the webinar and artists and patiently hearing uh, today we enrich our knowledge about our pioneer first modern indian researcher acharya pokhachandra ray and his research work in his lifetime and the research work on nanoparticle in recent time this is actually a journey uh, how things to improve itself from era to era so nowadays we have lots of instrument to detect structural feature we can locate the position of atom uh, we have individual process spectrophotometer so that's the improvement of science from this era to now recent day so hope you will uh, enjoy the program and thank you once again so taking permission from our principal sir uh, we want to end up the session so take care be safe thank you once again